In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned to the Jordan. I love that sentence. It's only found in Luke. I imagine Jesus walking down the street, very happy, full of the Holy Spirit with a big smile on his face. <laughs> when have you been full of the Holy Spirit? Maybe it was when you were baptized, if you can remember that. Maybe when your children were baptized, or when you were married. Maybe when your children were born, or maybe when you were surrounded by the people you love. For me, it's all of those, and also when I was ordained. What a great feeling that is, being full of the Holy Spirit. Too bad it didn't last that long for Jesus. He was then led to the wilderness. I don't know about you, but when I think of the wilderness, I think of being in the woods, the forest. But the Middle Eastern wilderness is a vast and harsh place, rocky, desolate, and dry, a desert. It could be a frightening place, especially for a person who was alone. They would really have to do battle physically and emotionally just to survive in that rough environment. Jesus was led into the wilderness very much alone. No human companionship, no food. Luke says that Jesus ate nothing during all those 40 days in the wilderness. What a turn of events for Jesus. One minute, a big smile on his face, full of the Holy Spirit. Next, alone in the wilderness, just trying to survive. This is the 40 days in the wilderness that we remember during this Lenten season. As Jesus suffered in the wilderness, we remember this by changing small things in our lives. Many Christians give up something they love, like sweets, such as candy or cake. Some give up desserts altogether, or some other food or drink they enjoy, such as, God forbid, coffee. <laughs> I couldn't do that. <laughs> some Christians fast at various times during Lent as Jesus fasted for 40 days. While it's not written, you have to assume that Jesus spent this time in prayer and meditation and contemplation. So again, many Christians set aside more time to pray and read scripture during this season. Lent is a time for reflection and prayer and solemn meditation as we prepare for the Easter season. The Lenten season is uncomfortable. We are asked to take on, give up, to discipline ourselves. Our lives are changed, our routines disrupted by the demands of the season. As if to say, don't get too comfortable where you are, because we have a ways to go on this journey. Have you ever wondered why you were asked to take on special disciplines in Lenten? Have you ever wondered why you were asked to change how you lived your life for these 40 days? It may be because we are called to be pilgrims, not settlers. We are called to see this life, this time, this place, as something we are passing through to the home God has prepared for us. We are not called to stake a claim and call this home. The disciplines of Lent remind us of how easily we become attached to this time, this life, this place, and how in that attachment we lose sight of the home waiting for us. The disciplines of Lent remind us how easy, easily we lose the vision of the future for the security of the present. Each of us is filled with the Holy Spirit at our baptism. And we are full, just as Jesus was full. In the prayer for the candidates, we pray, fill them with your Holy Spirit and life-giving Spirit. At the signing with oil, the celebrant says, 
you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own. We are filled as Jesus was filled. But even filled with the Holy Spirit, we can be led into our own wilderness. We need those times in our lives when we come face to face with who we are. In today's Gospel, the devil presented idols to Jesus. We are faced with idols in our own lives. Those things that cause us to act in ways that turn us from living a godly life. Taking Jesus as our model, we can use these wilderness times to go deep inside ourselves, quietly and reflectively, so that we can confront our temptations and rid ourselves of whatever it is that makes us act contrary to the promise we made at our baptism. One of the reasons we are given a gospel passage on the temptation of Jesus at the beginning of each Lent is to remind us that the church encourages us to use Lent as a time to do this kind of reflection. In the early church, the 40 days of Lent were used by those preparing for baptism to think about their coming baptism and to prepare for the commitment they would make for sharing in the life of the church. Those of us who are already baptized have made that commitment, so we should meditate on how these promises have informed our lives. It's not always easy. It's not easy to admit our failings. It's often even harder to repent and begin anew. But we find the good news in the first verse we read today. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit didn't leave him to face the desert alone. We are also filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit doesn't leave us when the going gets tough. The Holy Spirit goes with us into the desert, helps us confront the hard times, and supports us as we turn again to living the life God has called us to live. The devil tempted Jesus when he was at his most vulnerable. He had spent 40 days in the wilderness, struggling to get by, and had not eaten in 40 days. Jesus was at his weakest point, both physically and mentally. This would have been, would have been a perfect time to give in, to sell his soul to the devil, as it were. The devil knew this, and that's why this time was chosen. But Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, didn't give in. He refuted everything the devil threw at him. I don't think it was by accident that this happened after he was baptized. Because he had the Holy Spirit with him, he was able to defeat evil. Jesus gives us a model of how we should fight temptation. We too are more apt to give in to temptation when we are at our lowest points. We need to remember that we are not alone in fighting evil. We too have the Holy Spirit to help us defeat and not succumb to evil. Of course, there are times when we give in. We, unlike Jesus, are not perfect. Sometimes we cannot resist what is put before us. Even with the Holy Spirit trying to pull us away, we give in. It is in those times that we need to remember that we can return to God, return to Christ. The grace of God is greater than any evil that can be put in front of us. God's grace is always there. All we need to do is receive it. God is always willing and happy to take us back after we fail. Even evil and the devil were defeated on the cross. They cannot keep us away from God's love. The realities of fullness and emptiness, grace and temptation, are very much a part of all of our lives. Jesus' wilderness experience wasn't a Hollywood movie scene. It was an intensely personal time of soul searching. In Luke's words, we hear Jesus acknowledge who he is, and we also hear that the devil departed from him until an opportune time. There will be other times of temptation and loneliness for Jesus. 
just as they will be for us. Our literature and music are full of stories about the devil and evil trying to take our souls. It's odd, really, in a world where it's perfectly acceptable to have your doubts about the devil as a concrete being, our culture and collective memory still retains these stories. They hold on to what is most important about the concept of evil, that it exists. The world is not perfect. Evil wants our souls, our very identities. These stories recognize that evil tempts us to go back on everything, to abandon who we are, to betray all that we love, usually to gain something or save ourselves. However, if we remember that we are full of the Holy Spirit, if we remember that Jesus is on our side, and if we remember that God's grace is free for the taking, we can defeat evil. We can return to God knowing that we are always welcome home. We resist evil and do good, not to become legends or win back our souls, but because Christ resisted evil first. So, we continue on this journey of Lent, following after Jesus, knowing that while our disciplines and our outsmarting of evil for a time may make us feel good, it is Jesus, not we or our penitents doing the real work. The temptation story isn't just about the devil's defeat. It is our story, our redemption. Amen. Amen.